Angina patients, don't exercise until you've seen this. Hi, I'm Christian from Cardiac Rehab Online, and today we're discussing angina. So, for people with angina or breathlessness and ischemia, with symptoms or without, it'd be advisable for you to take some extra precautions when exercising to ensure you're both safe and effective. There are essentially two main classifications of angina. We've got stable and unstable. Stable angina is when the symptoms are predictable and reproducible. It can be relieved by resting or using a GTN spray, and it's brought on by similar situations. Unstable is when it is diagnosed or the circumstances have changed in which it comes on. In either case, it is not recommended for you to undertake any exercise until you've seen your doctor. Now, for those of you with stable angina, when you're looking at exercising, you need to set your heart rate to between 10 to 15 beats per minute below the ischemic threshold. This threshold is determined by an ECG ETT, so that's uh, electrocardiograph exercise treadmill test. So that's commonly performed on a treadmill or can be performed on a bike. So we're looking for the point at which you start to experience symptoms of angina, which may include breathlessness, chest pain, dizziness, nausea. Now, if you haven't had an ECG test, then it would be a good idea to speak to your doctor to establish this threshold. If this is not an option for you, then you need to be aware at what level of intensity and heart rate you can exercise to before you experience symptoms, and then record the heart rate. You can now use this as your upper limit and then set your heart rate monitoring device at say 10 to 15 beats per minute lower than that figure. An example would be exercising at 115 beats per minute. This brings on early signs of angina. Then you would set your limit at 100 to 105 beats per minute. So you stay well below that level at which you're going to experience symptoms. So you can train safely and effectively. But I would highly recommend that you seek medical assessment first. Okay, let's look at angina triggers. What are the main things you need to pay attention to? So we have the four E's. Exercise, emotional stress, extreme cold, and eating. So let's look at exercise. The workload is increased for the heart due to an increase in heart rate and increase in blood pressure. Isometric exercises should always be avoided and anything like lawn mowing, lifting furniture, or any prolonged static holds as blood pressure rises dramatically. So let's look at emotional stress. When we become overly emotional, it has a direct effect on your heart by increasing heart rate and blood pressure. That's just reminded me of another video we have on the channel for you, which teaches you how to control your emotions, which in turn regulate your heart rate. Have a look out for that one. Extreme cold creates an environment for increased demand of the heart and constriction of the peripheral arteries. That's the ones in our extremities like fingers, toes. That's why they get cold in cold weather. This has the effect of increasing blood pressure and constriction of the arteries that feed the heart muscle, resulting in reduced blood flow to the heart muscle itself. Okay, so the last one of the four E's, eating. You may not expect this to have much of an effect, but it can, as blood flow is prioritized for digestive purposes. The heart's workload is increased. It increases by about one liter per minute, about 30 to 60 minutes after eating, and can cause a bout known as postprandial angina. So unstable angina is categorized by the following indicators. So this is what to look out for. Number one, tightness, burning, or dull sensations in the chest, pain or heavy feeling in the left arm, right arm, or both. Three, pain or discomfort in the throat, abdomen, or back. 
And number four, any changes in the established pattern of the current angina. Okay, so secondly, if you're exercising at lighter levels than normal, but you're experiencing symptoms, now we need to pay attention to new bouts of angina. When doing tasks around the home that never really bothered you before, like going up the stairs, previously was no problem, but now you're noticing that it's becoming harder and you feel like a bout of angina may come on or does come on. If this is the case, then it's time to revisit your doctor and update them on your new symptoms and present condition. Now, one tool you can use is an exercise heart rate monitor, and there are many types on the market today. You can set your upper and lower limits on the device, which will then alert you if you're exceeding those limits. It's very handy, as it will keep an eye on you, especially for those of you who like to work hard and get a sweat up. Now, one thing that is not recommended is high intensity upper body work. This should be avoided as there's less vascularity in the upper body and the muscles. So it increases the pressure on the heart. So increasing the blood pressure. Now, prophylactic prevention using GTN sprays, glycerol nitrate, uh, prior to exercise may be appropriate and can have significant benefits, but should be agreed upon with your doctor before use. To summarize, here are the main points to take from this video today. If you have unstable angina, seek medical help to get it under control so it becomes stable angina. Once stable, you can then exercise. You can use the GTN spray prior to sessions to help. Use a device to monitor the heart rate and set the limits 10 to 15 beats per minute below your threshold. Lastly, remember that if you have stable angina and it becomes unpredictable by becoming more severe, more frequent, or coming on at lower levels of workload or at rest, then this is the time to visit your doctor. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give me the thumbs up, but most importantly, share what you've experienced in the comments section below. It may just help someone else. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you next time.